Okay, uh, this is um, a video uh, that's going to talk more about our, our system and how that runs out of the computer. So we've talked about everything else. Um, we've talked about logic, how the tracks go on there, how the tracks are run off there, where things go. We've talked about output three and four. Uh, we've talked about universal control, how that has all the settings and sends places where it needs to go. We've talked about this, um, but this is what it looks like. This is the Fire Studio Mobile um, PreSonus. Um, <clears throat> so this is what we plug into the computer. Uh, it's run by Firewire Cable, which, um, hence the name Fire Studio Firewire Run. Uh, so you get different inputs with this. So we'll just we'll get from the computer to the box first. Um, so it's got a symbol on it, uh, probably easier to show you on here, see um, that sort of symbol up there, um, that's kind of the universal symbol, it's got it on the back for Firewire. Cool, so you'll have a port on the side of your computer, um, it won't necessarily be the same shape as this. Uh, but it will have that symbol next to it, or if it's a newer MacBook Pro, it will have a little um, lightning bolt symbol next to it, uh, which is for Thunderbolt. Um, but that will run into Firewire as long as you have the right type of cable. So the cable here, um, you get different kind of kinds of ends on them. So the one that you just looked at in the back of that is this one here. If I'm on my camera. Cool. So it's sort of it's sort of square, um, and then it's got a um, sort of rounded off bottom corner there. Um, so commonly referred to as six pin firewire. Uh, so this uh, is the cable for my computer, which then translates that into a nine pin, which is straight square like that. Um, the the Thunderbolt one I believe is similar to that, um, but it's it is different. I think it might have a slot through the middle or something like that. Um, but you just you just go to the store and you just say I want a fire wire cable. I want six pin to six pin, six pin to nine pin, six pin to Thunderbolt. Whichever one you want, um, plug in and it will work. Uh, if the people in the store don't know what this is because Firewire is a Mac only um, thing, just tell them it's like a USB cable. And just say, show me your USB cables and then you'll find these in the same sort of area. I have had to do that before in the shop. Um, yeah, but just because it's Mac only, not everyone knows what you're talking about when you start talking about Thunderbolt and Firewire and that sort of thing. Um, although they probably should if they're working in one of those stores. <laughs> but <laughs> it's all good. Cool. Um, so that then comes into the back of here. You do have two inputs on the back of here. Um, so you can use either one of those. It doesn't matter. Um, you can use those actually to link these devices together. Just as a side note, um, we're not going to look at that right now, but that is something that you can do. Um, so the overview of this thing really quick, you've got two inputs in the front because we will use this for recording as well. We're going to do some videos on that. Um, so the, these are like a multi-pin plug. Um, so they will take uh, XLR, which is your standard microphone cable, or they will take quarter inch jack, which is your standard guitar cable. Um, so you've got two of those on the front that will take either. And then on the back, you've got more inputs. Um, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that gives you um, a total of eight inputs straight into the box. Uh, you can, if you desperately need to, you can get two more through this unit here, which has a little splitter, uh, which I'm not sure if I have here to show you or not. Uh, I don't think I do. I think that's in my other case. But that's all good. Um, you'll, you'll see what that looks like. It's got red and white plugs on it. Um, that go into one of those and that's got all your MIDI connections on it, it's got uh, RCA um, type connections on it, um, that's all good, uh, this, uh, everything's backwards, 
Hey, it's like working in a mirror. Cool. Um, so these are your outputs, uh, your main left and right. So now for us, that's where our track comes out. So we've got track left, track right coming out of there. Cool. So uh, on our universal control, that's um, one and two. Nice and simple. Um, that one there, that's for a power plug, uh, which it's pretty obvious. Um, you can get power um, adapters to run these off power, but they through Firewire they are powered by the computer. Okay, so you don't have to run them externally. The reason that's there it means you can run it externally. So if you're um, doing heavy load recording, you can um, you can have this run by its own power supply. Uh, and that just takes one of the loads off the computer because it's not having to power this box at the same time. Um, cool, but generally we don't do that. We just let the, because we're normally using it for playback anyway, we just let the computer power it up and it is all good. Uh, so on the back to the front, so there's your headphone output. Okay, so that's what we refer to as output three and four because um, if you look, watch the universal control video, uh, we've hijacked uh, this output there as output 3 and 4. That's where we run our click um, and our guide if we have one. Uh, so this up here, 48 volt, um, that is phantom power. Okay, so uh, techie guys will know about this, but um, certain equipment requires phantom power to run it okay so we're only going to use it from this box when we're recording okay when we're recording through here um, and it's only going to be when you're using an XLR cable and it's only going to be if you're using something like a condenser mic cool because um, we don't need to plug DIs into this um, this does all that job itself anyway um, but yeah condenser mics you'll have to turn that on um, otherwise they won't work because they require power. Um, cool, uh, active DIs also require power um, either from a battery or sent from the sound desk through the same 48 volt button. So anytime you see 48 volt with a button like that, it's phantom power. Um, yeah, which which you need to be careful with if you're working from a sound desk, but that's a whole other video. Um, just where you're sending it. So you've got your knobs there, um, one and two, that's just uh, uh, just for recording. Okay, so we, we won't worry about those for now, but uh, basically that's the volume, the gain coming um, in through mic 1 and 2, okay, and what it's sending to the computer, which we'll talk about more when we're re doing recording videos, and then main. So for us, we've got phones and main. Those are volume controls, okay, phones obviously for click, main for track coming out of the back here okay so you can adjust those those volumes and I have occasionally done this on stage when um, when there's been a click that's just come out really loud um, and we haven't had contact with the sound guy to be able to tell him I've just walked over and just knocked this back a bit okay just to save everyone's ears so people's ears aren't bleeding because of a simple issue but generally I try and leave it around the middle somewhere Cool, um, just because it gives you plenty of room to move in both directions. Um, and it's not something you don't want to be doing your adjustments from here all the time, otherwise you're going to throw it out on other songs. You want to be adjusting your clicks on Logic uh, so that they're all the same uh, with the HyperDraw. Cool, um, so what we do from here is um, our track. That is then sent off to two separate DIs. I don't have a DI here to show you today because all my DIs are being used. Um, okay, so uh, what you need is a DI that has a link or a through connector in it, okay, um, which is important. Um, and then you need some sort of disk to receive from that. Okay, well, you need, to, you need a sound system. Obviously, you're going to be working with a sound system. So from the DI, you're going to have your XLR out the back. That's going to go off to the sound desk like any other DI would. Um, and that's going to, because you've got two DIs, so you've got two separate um, channels run to the desk. That gives you two channels on the desk of track, and they are panned to your left and right. So that is your stereo track. Um, that's part of the reasons we use this box, is it allows us to run stereo track. Um, and then you have phones, and that, that does the same thing. That goes to a DI um, that's got a through connector on it or a link. Um, and then 
it's run off to the desk. So then at, at the desk, um, you then take the click and you just make sure that it's off everywhere except for um, where you want to send it, which is in the Muso's ears. So we run in-ears for all the Muso's. Um, and so a click return, uh, a click is sent through the returns uh, back to the headphone amps and then into the, the in-ears. Obviously click isn't something you can put in a fold back because everyone will hear it and they will think that you're crazy. Um, so, but if you don't have all the musos on in-ears, um, all you need is a small desk uh, next to your drummer, okay? So there's there's a couple of variations here. So so we can do it just that way that I just described, and you can send the drummer the click send um, solely that way, um, and then you don't actually need the links in the DIs um, if you're going to do that. Or you can or you can have just your I'm going to put this down. You can have just your drummer on headphones um, because if your drummer's good enough, then uh, he's the only one who needs clip, let's be honest, um, as long as he can stay in time with it. Um, we like to send it to all the music so everyone can hear it, so everyone is, you know, keeping with that. that that's really the ideal situation. Um, what we, so what we do is we run a desk for the drummer as well as sending the click um, through the main desk um, and then back to the other musos. Um, so this this step is either an and as well as um, click going that way or or it's a instead of um, so yeah so if you don't have all the other musos on in ears you don't need to send the click to the desk at all it doesn't need to go there um, so. Uh, I haven't got a DI here, but okay, say um, I've got my XLR going out to the desk on the back of the DI and the front I've got my input. Cool. Um, so two of those DIs are going to receive inputs from our track, left and right, um, and then they're going to have links coming out and you're going to use something like a patch cable. Cool. Um, because we have all the computer and everything at the drummer in a road case. Um, so all the tracks are run by the drummer, that's really the ideal thing to do, so they can start when everybody's ready, um, they are in control of that, they can stop it if it goes out of time, um, yeah, who's better to do that than the drummer, right? Um, so, uh, out of here, into the DI, and then link out, okay, same left and right track, same with click, cool, that then goes into a desk for the drummer. Um, I'll grab a desk for demonstration sake. Grab my cable. Cool. Okay, here it is. Here is the desk. Um, this is not the desk that we use. Um, this is a much smaller version that we use in a with got a small portable kit um, that fits in a briefcase uh, I use it for the young guys if we go into a competition or something like that um, it's just something that we can carry with us we can all we do is we pre ask for um, two desk channels um, so they they have the desk channel sitting there I've got DIs and everything all ready to go all I need is the two XLR cables bang them in the back and everything's ready to go so th this is out of the portable kit this this is pretty rubbish um, it doesn't cope with the um, with the output that we have from the track system but it does the job um, so d what we actually have in our main system is we have a much bigger version it's, it's just a small desk still um, it must be like an 8 channel something like that it's got sliders on it um, if, if you can get one with sliders that, that makes it a lot easier for the drummer than fiddling around with knobs um, you know, especially if they're trying to change something on the go and they're, you know, they're keeping stuff going with their other hand, they want to just be able to grab a slider and move it up or down. Um, complete side note. Anyway, so from those links from the DIs with our patch cable, um, obviously I've, I've 
uh, I've done two of these with track, so they are our left and right for track. Uh, click, click um, there, and there's a fourth channel here that's going to be um, for desk feed for the drummer because what you're doing with the drummer is you're putting them on headphones so nobody else can hear the click that they're getting, um, so you're taking their fold back away. Uh, you could, I mean, you could still run them with a fallback if you had to, but ideally, uh, you don't want to do that. You you want to have them on headphones uh, so that they're getting everything through um, through the headphones, um, which you know we have headphone amps to do that. Um, but they're, because I've got a desk now. Um, you can you can use that so um, you just you have headphones out of this I'm, I'm going to show you another box shortly okay so um, basically if the drummer has the headphones coming out out the back um, going to the headphones now they can adjust how much click they're getting how much track they're getting and how much of your feed from the disc that they're getting Cool. Um, so the other box here. Uh, this is I just made this, um, and I'm not an electrical engineer at all. Uh, really simple. You just get all the connectors. Um, uh, here we have a store called J Car that sells all this kind of stuff. Whatever your electronic store is. Um, so what I have here is uh, that's the headphone output. That's set at a right angle. That's just because of the case it fit in. All that is as a adapter. Um, so that's the, the small mono jack for the headphones uh, and then I've got XLR in okay so that's going to be my feed from the desk I have also here got a speak on connector which we don't use um, that is just in case I come across a weird situation where we need a speak on cable uh, you generally won't, those are generally amplified feeds um, we don't want to plug an amplified feed in here okay it would have to be if somebody was running um, a powered fold back so that the fold back was doing the amplifying you could then unplug that and run it into here cool that then comes out in a standard quarter jack so again my patch lead goes from the quarter jack and that's going to go into my fourth input on here okay and that's going to give me my desk feed uh, or monitor feed from the desk return whatever cool and then my uh, I've got another one there and that's just the output from this that then connects back in there and that's just connected straight to this one so inside these these are just wired into um, the jacks Cool. So in this case, I've actually got two inputs wired into that one jack, um, which is fine because you only use one at a time. Cool. Um, and it, it's really simple to do this stuff. Just uh, look it up online. XLR to mono jack. Sweet. Easy. Um, and that that's basically it, right? Like. Um, yeah, different ways of running different systems, but really that's that's the ideal is um, send everything to the desk, send it back to musos on in ears, um, or uh, I mean even singers on in ears. If you've got singers on in ear in ears, that's what we're aiming for. We, but we're not there yet. Um, but then the, the again they've got to decide what they want to hear because we have things like guides and that um, click they might not want to hear click they might want to just listen to the drummer but it's all personal preference in terms of that uh, don't let your drummer tell you he doesn't want to listen to click though that's not an option okay he might say he is the metronome but if he is the metronome he can play in time with the metronome hey um, yeah really important stay on that click if you're not on the click you're not on the track Cool. Um, yeah. So I mean, that's a simple thing. But yeah, get a get something a bit bigger, and take a bit more grunt through it. Um, yeah. And then the drummer, you know, you, part of the reason for it is uh, different drummers, you know, want stuff. Some of them want the click really loud. Some of them don't want it so 
blistering loud, some of them want the track really loud, some of them don't, some of um, you know, you give them a little disc and they sort it all out for themselves. Um, it's taking a lot of work off your your sound guy down the back having to change, you know, work out what each drummer wants. Um, yeah, because we have drummers that then even go to the desk and they'll set up their own uh, desk feed. Uh, they'll go, you know, yeah, I want some of this, some of that, and they'll go and do that themselves. Just yeah, so having to double handle everything. But cool. Um, uh, that's just an idea of how the system runs, so you know where things are plugged in, what they do. Um, really handy if you're fault finding, if you know what things are and what their job is, what they're doing. Cool, I hope this has helped.